We have Steve Lazaridis. He is the CEO at Fawnism. They are 32-bit sponsors, so give them a big round of applause for sponsoring ClueCon this year. The sponsors make all this possible. Steve was previously a Linux developer. He was the founder and CEO of Fawnism. They're a cloud device management solution. <coughs> he, uh, he likes to bake bread to eat with olive oil and feta cheese. That's, uh, you know, as we, as we go through our speakers, we pull out the most interesting bits, and that, uh, that's what made it to the top for Steve. He likes to bake bread, and maybe he'll tell us a little bit about that. And in this talk, he's going to be telling us how to integrate with FreeSwitch to help automate provisioning and improve support processes. The title of this talk is FreeSwitch and Fawnism Sitting in a Tree Provisioning. Let's give a big round of applause for Steve Lazaridis. Thank you. Steve, take it away. So um, this is our first ClueCon, so we're really excited to be here, and thanks for having us. Um, again, my name is Steve Lazaridis, and I'm the founder of Phonism. Uh, we, I, my background is software engineering, and we basically do cloud-based device management and provisioning. So we separated the device management and provisioning capabilities outside of the soft switch, or PBX, if you will, and we built the standalone platform and wrapped it around with APIs and whatnot to allow us to plug into uh, different uh, platforms and uh, telephony systems. So uh, today we're going to talk about integrating Phonism with FreeSwitch using Phonism's API and uh, using FreeSwitch APIs. And when we wanted, when we started to do this, our goal was to provide a simple and easy setup, right? When you deploy this and you want to plug your free switch uh, instances into Phonism, we wanted it to be super easy and have that uh, plug-in capability, synchronize data between your free switch servers and pho your Phonism account. <clears throat> and uh, the idea was we open source this code. So it's really simple. It's a Python-based code base, uh, very simple to fork and maintain and add new features. Um, so, uh, you know, part of the benefits and reasons for integrating, I mean, these, these are kind of standard benefits when you integrate with another sing, uh, system. You have single source of truth of data. You don't have to worry about importing data from one platform to another manually uh, by CSV or manually doing it, whatnot, right? You avoid errors, save time. Um, and with the free switch market, uh, there's no really standard UI to manage the free switch provisioning servers. I mean, there's Fusion PBX, and that's awesome. Um, and, but we have a lot of customers that don't use Fusion and they just deploy FreeSwitch uh, raw and they, they manage it themselves. So we wanted to build a solution that will help them when they deploy devices uh, and manage them, they can automatically share da synchronized data between the two systems. So um, the implementation of this is pretty simple. It's API powered uh, using REST APIs. Um, it's a Python application, we call it an agent, that runs simply in the background on your FreeSwitch server. It uses uh, standard calls through, through our REST API. And the business logic of, the, of what this, uh, this agent is doing is all in the Python code. So it's super easy to audit, check it out. You can fork our repository. I'll have a URL to that in a minute at the end of, this, at, <clears throat> at the end of the slides for you to see. And uh, important, uh, an important piece of this is all the data interchange between the two systems is, is encrypted. Um, now, uh, when we started thinking about how we're going to integrate with FreeSwitch, we said, well, you know, there's a couple of options, right? There's the event socket, um, uh, the ESL, but that's not really secure. And we said, okay, well, we could... Uh, how can we secure ESL? Maybe we VPN, set up VPN tunnels to each free switch for each of our customers, or we do reverse SSH tunnels. And all of that was a big no, right? That's hard to manage. So that's why we did it in kind of a lightweight, just agent that runs on each instance. Um, so uh, let's jump into kind of how you set this up. So in our solution, you each, each free switch instant gets an API key. So each integration, if you will, gets an API key. In this case, it's a free switch integration. And you would assign that API key to a given tenant in your, ne in your network. And then you, um, we wanted the installation to be super easy. So if you could see, I just copy and paste that. That's the install 
script essentially. And when you run the install script on your server, it simply just runs, auto installs, checks the dependencies. Our dependency is Python, right? And um, it, it uh, installs, API keys are installed on your FreeSwitch server and communication is secured and then it auto syncs the data. So the data that we synchronize is basically today the first version of this it synchronizes the user database. So if you think about device management and deploying devices and provisioning, um, you assign usernames and passwords to these devices plus a bunch of other settings. Well, it's synchronizing username and passwords to a centralized provisioning system is one of the big things, right? So the first version of this synchronizes the user data. And um, as you can see in this diagram, uh, Phonism is a multi-tenanted system, and the way the agent works, it lies, it's simply a, a, an application that lies on each FreeSwitch instance, and it's mapped to a single tenant inside your Phonism account. Um, so a little bit more about this. Uh, the agent is a read-only. Uh, it only reads from FreeSwitch, and it then writes to, to uh, Phonism. Um, I can see in the future uh, some of the enhancements that we'd like to do is uh, prob uh, uh, add the ability to read and write from the Phonism interface, given that, you know, instead of creating accounts on your free switch system or new users via uh, whatever tools you're using, you can kind of manage that in Phonism. And uh, we want to like synchronize more data, learn from the community, because honestly, we're really new in the free switch community. This is our first clue con. This is the first integration we've done with, with free switch. So, we're hoping to get some good feedback from you guys. Um, I've had a couple of really interesting conversations here at the show about free switch multi-tenanted capabilities, which is something we don't necessarily support in this first version. Like I said, it's a free switch agent on each instance of, uh, of your free switch servers. But in the future, I can see us integrating and supporting the multi-tenanted capabilities of free switch if that's something that we find that our customers um, uh, need and support. <clears throat> So, um, you know, device management should be easy, right? I mean, that's, that's a duh, but we're 20 years into VoIP and we still have customers today that come to us and they were deploying and managing devices themselves, configuring them one by one, taking them, rolling them out, rolling a truck out and, and uh, installing them manually on, at the customer premise. So um, what I'm going to do now is I want to go a little bit and talk a little bit about how Phonism actually works and some of the technology and the design ideas behind how we built the solution. Um, so when we took a look at, okay, let's build the provisioning and, and configuration management server, right, for devices. And some of the ideas, like three high-level ideas that we had was, well, we need to have a generic engine to handle all of the configuration data. Um, the ability to support XML or whatever format, we, it needs to be generic enough to be able to learn and we can teach it other formats and generate any type of format, right? And you, once you solve the problem around managing data and managing configuration types and formats, then the other challenge is, okay, well, you, you got this cool solution that manages all that. How do you expose that to an easy to use interface for your, for your customers? So that was, the, that was another challenge, and we have a solution to easily map like configuration data sets to UI components where it becomes an easy to use interface for, for customers. And then request processing stack. Um, what I mean by this is if you look at existing provisioning solutions, like when we started building Phonism, we said, okay, well, we kind of took a look at what was out there. Um, weren't, obviously, we weren't happy. That's why we built this. But a lot of the provisioning servers today, they just simply serve configuration files from a directory, and the web server serves them. Um, and that's not how we do it. We chose to do it differently. The way we do it is we have a request processing stack in the application that handles every single request from, uh, from the phones. So some files are auto-generated on demand, other files are pre-generated, stored in a secure area, but they're not opened up. And that, that request processing stack We'll talk a little bit about the details as we move forward. So in the configuration engine, again, you know, it needed to be able to support any type of format. Is it XML? Is it JSON? Is it an INI file? Or is it even, I mean, we have some phones that support like scripted command line, uh, just a big text file with a bunch of commands by setting configuration parameters. So 
and we needed it to be able to, we can, we should be able to add easy, easily add new formats to it, right? So um, the way phonism works is when, what this means is since we can easily add new formats of configuration type, for us to add support for a new device or a new device family, it's very easy. So once we teach our engine how to parse and manage that data, then it becomes pretty easy to start mapping that data to UI components. So that's where this part comes in. Um, being able to easily map that's uh, really important because obviously you need easy to use interfaces for your support team. I mean, we sell to service providers that their technicians are managing XML files or um, uh, having to configure corner case parameters for each customer. And that, that becomes a pain when you have to manage these text files yourself. Um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, where did my XML files go? I mean, that question, we've gotten it before and it's, why do we still get that question in this industry? I mean, it's, it's kind of sad because we shouldn't be doing this manually anymore. This should be an easy, easy thing. Right, as more and more devices come into play in the market, sure, it gets complicated, but with the right solutions, um, we can solve this with software. Um, so the request processing stack. So the way, the way it works, high level, right? We do, obviously we do authentication and authorization of each request. So, you know, and we support authentication and encryption methods that the devices support. So um, today it's, it's uh, HTTP authentication uh, we authorize requests when they come in. We don't, you know, if a, if a phone or a device requests a file and that file is abc.xml per se, um, we make sure that that phone that's requesting it is authorized in the system. We authenticate it with HTTP authentication. It's over SSL um, and uh, stuff like that, right? And so um, the idea for the stack, when we designed it, Every phone, I don't know if you guys, some of you have probably built provisioning systems. Every phone kind of talks differently. Like Polycom boots up and it requests a bunch of different files based on what you tell it. Um, Yaling devices do differently. HTEC devices do differently, et cetera. So we wanted the stack to be generic where we can easily add support for different types of devices and handle um, different types of requests based on those devices. All right. So after all that and putting all these pieces together, generic configuration management, uh, you easy mapping to UI elements and ma processing requests and being able to support the different devices, you end up with interfaces similar to this. So this was an interface we released uh, last year. It's a simple button management interface. Um, this is uh, a, um, a phone that has 12 line keys and it's a touch screen phone and they're, they're set up in a grid, right? And you can move these BLFs or speed dials around and whatnot or line keys and um, add expansion modules. But in this case, this is a generic interface. So if the phone that you were editing in our portal per se, um, if it had five hard buttons on the right and five hard buttons on the left, the interface would render differently. And it, we, we, we know what type of phone you're managing on the system, so we render the interface accordingly. So the user experience for your customers or your technicians is the same, basically. So um, that's kind of the high level overview of, of phonism and kind of how the reasons we built it and why we chose to solve this problem in the way that we did. Um, I'd like to, uh, you know, we work with a lot of the manufacturers very closely. They let us know when firmware updates are coming out so that we can make those available to our customers. And we're here today with one of our manufacturer partner, HTEC, and we have a booth right outside. I'd like to um, uh, have HTEC come up and, uh, call, and talk to you a little bit about what they're doing with their devices and their branding. Um, Chris Schaefer uh, runs channel for HTEC. So Chris, if you wouldn't mind joining us. If you could uh, hold the microphone really close to your mouth, that's uh, what's needed for us. And I want to talk to you folks briefly about HTAC. Hold the heads on. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Just hold it close. Okay. 
We've been providing quality IP sets since night since 2000. Really close, really close. It's got to be really close. Okay. Otherwise, we can't hear you all the way back here. We we've been manufacturing these IP sets since 2005, and we have a unique value proposition for the community. We recently updated our models to where they're high quality, and what we do that's very important and gain, gains us a lot of market share is the fact that we provide US sales and technical support, including technical support directly from the manufacturer. Typically, when folks in our community have a question, they email the team, and within 12 to 24 hours, our technicians, whether they be in the US or in China, answer your questions, whether it's about provisioning or getting certain keys to work. Now, something important that I want to talk to, and this is why I came to HTEC. We provide a valuable service to, to the community. What we do is, if you think about sets in general, they sit on a person's desk for five to 15 years. So no matter where you go, to a restaurant or an office, the brand is there evident on the phones. And what we do is we brand the IP sets with your branding on it so that your customers are buying a complete solution from you that includes your brand. In the past, when you deal with manufacturers, they say, well, you have to order 500 phones or 1,000 phones or 5,000 phones. We have a unique opportunity here to where we put your branding on the phone in two forms. If you order from us direct from China, we will deliver to you 50 phones of a given, given model with your branding on it, manufactured at our plant. And what happens here is from the point that we get your order to its delivery to your office, it takes eight to 10 days. And the fact is it's 50 phones, so we don't want you folks ordering 500 to 1,000 phones and having them sit in your warehouse. We want to be a channel partner to where you're turning your inventory and not investing in inventory that's sitting in your back office. So we want to deliver to you according to your sales funnel and deliver a product that is unique. And the, the fact that you're dealing with us directly or with one of our distributors, two things happen. You have your own branding. And the other thing is, since it hasn't been distributed three or four times, we give you a price point where you're going to make more money and develop more business. Lower price point so you can sell more product. We support the various formats. There's 17 platforms right now that we support. And we just recently got certified with you folks for the free switch. I'm the head of sales here in the United States and we we'll welcome you to visit us out at the booth. Um, what we're doing for folks with the free switch community, we're sending you free demos. So you meet with us and give us a call. We will send you a phone to provision. We'll provide you with technical support. Steve and his team are available to work with you. And as a matter of fact, we got some cool stuff at our booth. We're giving away a 3D printer. So we'd like you to come over and register to win the printer. We're gonna be giving that away in about five minutes. And with all of that, Steve and I are here to answer your questions. If you have any questions about phonism or HTEC. So we thank you. We look forward to meeting you out in the hallway. And it's a pleasure meeting with you folks the last few days. Yeah. Here's the, uh, it's just, here's the URL to the, to the GitHub repo for the free switch agent.